following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Continuing with uh, our divine, human, and animal nature, we state that the name that we find in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, which is written with four letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. And that uh, in esotericism is called the Holy Tetragrammaton, the four-lettered name of God, which in the Bible is translated as Jehovah, but that in a strict esoteric terms we said Yod Hava because uh, the name Jehovah or Yod Hava Yod He Bab He points at the duality the two uh, positive negative polarities of divinity which exist in every single person. Each one of us has his own particular individual Yod Hava, Jehovah, within. That's our divine nature. So when you read the Bible, you have to know how to read it. And to understand that the God that is mentioned there is within you, not outside. <coughs> and if, it is, if he is outside, it will be, of course, within the, every person that we know, within every uh, creature that we see in nature. Because not only we, the intellectual animals, call by mistake human beings, have that within. The true human being, of course, has developed that divinity within. That's the difference. And is what we have to understand. Because in this day and age, there are many people in the earth which study Christianity or Judaism or Islam that think that they are the human being described in the book of Genesis. But indeed, we are, we are, we will say, just a certain percentage of it. We have the possibility of becoming that Adam of the Bible, which is that human nature that we are striving, that we are fighting to get through the discipline that we are teaching here and that we have to understand. Because the book of Genesis describes the way in which 
the first humanity appeared in the planet Earth. And this is what we have to understand. We derived from that humanity. But the humanity described in the book of Genesis as Adam made male female into the image of God was another humanity that was not fallen. And that we refer as the Lemurian root race. A root race that existed before the Atlantean race. So that, of course, Lemurian race is that Adam that the Bible talks about. In, in which physicality, all that which we call divine was reflected or is present through. For instance, uh, when we read the moment in which this Jehovah Elohim was making uh, Adam in the book of Genesis, It is written that uh, he says, and, and Yod Chava Elohim took Adam and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Of course, that is written in the second day of Genesis, or I mean in the second chapter. But in the first chapter, we discover that when the man, when Adam, in other words, a human being was created, was created male-female, androgynous. This word androgynous comes from the Greek andros, man, and genica, woman. So when we said androgynous, we are saying male-female. This is how Adam was created in one body. So when we point at that, we have to understand that these two polarities were shown not only physically but also psychologically and spiritually because God uh, itself behold that I said itself because if I said himself I am pointing that he is male but itself is neutral within which male and female is within or are with it. So it is written that Elohim made Adam into his own image and to his own likeness. Just by saying that into his own image is male, into his own likeness is female. That's why it's repeated. Because it will be written only one time, will be enough. He was made into his image. Why repeat into his likeness? Right? It will be a waste of words. But in order to repeat that is in order to point that first the male and then the female, the two polarities, in one, spiritually. So that is how uh, this Adam was created. And of course, as we explained in the previous lecture, the physicality, the physical body, of those human beings of the Lemurian root race crystallize in this three-dimensional world after recapitulating previous stages of evolution within the superior dimensions within the psychological space when we said psychological space, we are, of course, referring to that which is within. Because before the physical body to crystallize in this two-dimensional world, first, the psyche has to crystallize as well, of all its polarities. And this is why uh, it is written in the book of Genesis that uh, Adam, that Adam, physical Adam, 
was uh, uh, commanded. This is uh, uh, command the beast of the field. When you read the beast of the field, you may think, what is that? In Hebrew, it is written haya, which means creature, or an element that has life of the earth. And uh, uh, in many books in the Bible, it's associated with the lion. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel describes, of course, this Adam Katmon. But uh, in his description, he describes four living creatures, which we call Hayot. This is what is in Hebrew is, uh, is said, Hayot means creatures. And this Hayot among them was the lion, which in book of Genesis describes as the beast of the field, which symbolizes the fire. Of course, this lion is always placed in Adam, because Adam is commanding it. And who is this Adam? Many times, through many lectures, we describe that Adam is the brain, physically speaking. So in this androgynous being, his brain <coughs> was, of course, reflecting the internal elements, psychological elements that were already created by God in the superior dimensions in past cosmic days. So the Lemurian root race were, of course, self-realized individuals of past cosmic days. All of them, we will say it in Sanskrit terms, were bodhisattvas, vehicles of masters that self-realized in past cosmic days, whose mission was to crystallize physically in order to leave their physical bodies to the other monads that were evolving in nature, in order for them, these uh, monads, to acquire the level of human being through these bodies. This is how the gods, the Elohim, the masters, leave their seed, physically speaking, in order for us to come and to inherit these bodies and to create the same thing that they already created within, in past cosmic days. Are you getting it? Because this is necessary to understand and to place in, in our consciousness in order to comprehend the doctrine. So this lion of the field or beasts of the field, reflects his power in the physical body, in the eyes. Physical eyes. The fire itself, the lion, when the fire is burning, is bright, emerges or gives uh, uh, light, photons, the forces that uh, are capable to be, sh to be uh, shone by the eyes, to, to be seen by the eyes. The eyes capture the light. Uh -huh. And this is what we have here, because the brain, physical brain, is that Adam. That's why in Kabbalah, when you describe the Lord of the universe, it describes only as a head, because it's a brain. But if you see your head, you see that all the senses are placed there. Your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth. Four senses. And of course, uh, that brain, that Adam, was also commanding the cattle of the ground. That cattle is of course related with the ears. 
In many lectures, we describe how uh, the bull, the cow, the cattle is always related with the sound, with the word. And of course, if you pay attention to your system, you will see that through the ears, you listen the sounds, you listen the music, and that always touches your heart or your emotional center. Actually, we had the superior emotional center and the inferior emotional center in us. Through the inferior emotional center, we get all that uh, uh, horrible music, modern music that is played in this day and age. So they play it. But the classical music, of course, relates to the superior emotional center. It touches the higher levels of the being. That's our emotional body. Because the eyes are always related with the mental body. The lion, the fire, the sun is always related with the solar mind. Both are located inside of us in the fifth dimension. As a seed. As a seed germ that could develop. That's why when we talk in Kabbalas, in Kabbalistic terms, we say that Hod is emotion and Netzah is mind. Both are in the fifth dimension. And if you observe your eyes and your ears, they are uh, uh, almost at the same level. Only the eyes a little bit above, because the mind is above the emotion. See? This is how Adam, the brain, expresses what is in the psyche, the true man, of course, because this lion should be a human body, mental human body, and this emotional body should be an astral solar body. Here in the nose, according to Ezekiel, is the eagle, so the eagle related with the air. It is obvious that through the nose we breed. That eagle symbolizes, of course, the soul. That we call the cow's all body. And that you see, control the eyes and the ears. It's in the middle, in the center. What we call in Kabbalistic terms, in the central column, is the nose. That is the causal body. What is in direct relation with the pineal gland? Because in the central column, we find, of course, the pituitary gland and the pineal gland in the brain. So that eagle is related in direct relation with the pineal gland. Flies can go from the nose up to the pineal gland and beyond the physical body. You see, that's why the eagle is placed in the middle of the two beasts, the bull and the lion. The bull, the ears, the lion, the, the, the sight. So this is how we have to understand, because when we utilize our physical senses, we immediately connect them to the brain and to the psychology that we have within. Of course, we are not going to state that everybody in this world has a lion and a bull within and an eagle. Most of these people in this earth have uh, other creatures that symbolize the ego within. Instead of the eagle, they have a parrot. Blah, 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 yeah. But it could become an eagle if we work. Instead of that uh, cattle, we can have another wild beast within. 
And the lion, of course, the mind, which instead of that lion, we have a donkey. And that is because we express our, what we have in the psyche through our senses. Observe, for instance, the movies of Hollywood. When they want to describe the extraterrestrials, they express what they have in their mind, what they have in the psyche through their senses, and they crystallize them and make movies with it. Or movies of horror, and all of that garbage that Hollywood made in this day and age. For all of us to pollute our psyche. It's very rare when in those uh, lands of California they made something for the psyche. It's just for that animality that we have within. Not for the lion, not for the bull, not for the eagle of Ezekiel. But for other devolving creatures. Pigs. Donkeys. Rats, etc. <coughs> So, we have to take care of our own particular Adam within. That's why it is written that God said, command the, the creatures, or, or the beasts of, of the wild, of the field, the cattle of the ground, and the birds of the air. That means control your senses. It's uh, talking to your brain. You know, concretely, this is how he says, he's talking to your brain, it says, control your sight, control your ears, control your nose. Hmm? And, of course, control your mouth. But that's the other creature. Where is Adam really related with the senses? Is the mouth. The taste. Which is uh, uh, directly related with the uh, vital body where Adam is the vitality that consciousness that controls life in the physical body that's Adam the mouth, the word and that's why it is written that Adam was naming and giving names to all the creatures that he was listening he was seeing it he was smelling. Because through the senses is how we capture this physical world. Which is a crystallization of the superior dimensions. Beings that exist in the internal world. So of course, that Adam, the androgynous Adam, was doing it. But to that androgynous Adam, it is stated there that Jehovah Elohim warned him and said, Hey, from the fruit that is in the middle of the garden, which is precisely the central column of the tree of life, it that points to the sexuality, you shall not eat. If you read the Bible, it will say, eat. It says, you shall not smell it. No, you shall not hear it. You shall not see it. No, you shall, you shall not eat. Because Adam is the speech. This is how we communicate. This is how I'm giving you this lecture. Thanks to my speech. To the images that I see in my, in my eyes. The sounds that I hear through my ears. In what I smell, like talk. If you realize how the smell and, and the taste are intimately related, if you go inside your nose, you see that the nostrils are precisely where the taste is when the food enters into your stomach. It passes there and you smell it and you taste it. This is how these two elements are united in your head. And that's why when we talk about the eagle and the mouth, we always say, this is Adam, 
The ego is that I'm within, the psyche within, the soul within. But in the taste, it is related to the physicality. And all creatures, of course, were made within the androgynous Adam as a help meet in order for this Adam to receive assistance, which in this case is the brain to develop, you know. So at that time, when these Lemurians receive the command, the order, don't, you shall not eat from the tree that is in the middle. It was referring, of course, to the two polarities. The two polarities of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because these two polarities develop that, you see, that mysterious sephira that is in the throat below the first triangle of the tree of life, the throat, which is related with Adam. Because through that, the brain develops. That was the objective of the creation of the human being. Or well, that is the objective of the creation of the human being in any planet. For that human being to develop the brain, the capacity of the brain 100%. And the power of the word, the power of the throat. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word relates to the brain. That's the mystery of that, the tree of knowledge. Which in the androgynous Adam is in the throat. Because the two polarities, the sexual polarities of Adam, the androgynous, are pointing upwards towards the brain. That's why the Lemurian humanity were seen more than one million and a half of tonalities of color. You know what is that? To, to see through your sight more than one million and a half of tonalities of color. Scarcely in this day and age people see the seven colors, the seven, you see, or the prisma. Scarcely in some tonalities. But the Lemurian, when seeing one million and a half of tonalities, when we're seeing or you know, hearing the sounds of nature and of, of the cosmos. Because the ears, the physical ears that they were having, were connected to the chakra Shwadistana, or uh, I mean the chakra Vishuddha, and the Shwadistana as well, which are related with the uterus, with, with the sexual force. You see how the Chwaristana, which is related with the sexual force, the uterus or the, or the prostate in the man, gives certain powers in order to develop the throat when men and women enter into puberty. You see the relationship there of sex. So in the Lemurian humanity, these two polarities were working harmoniously. Perfect. So that's why they were in tone with nature and the universe. But of course, according to evolution, they have to leave their bodies to the new creatures that are coming from the animal kingdom in order for those monads to have the opportunity to enter into the human level. These creatures that come from the animal kingdom eventually will enter into the humanoid kingdom or called intellectual animal kingdom. Developing intellect. And have the opportunity to create 
those bodies that we are talking here, the lion, the cattle, the eagle, that all the gods have within, that reflect in the mind the power, the psychological power of God. So by leaving the bodies, they leave the seed there so they can develop that as well. And that's why the warning came to the androgynous man. You shall not eat from the tree of good and evil. Because the day that you eat from it, you should surely die. I mean, the real human being will die. And after that, of course, uh, come the next in the Bible. When it is stated that uh, Yahovah Elohim said, it is not good that Adam, the brain, is by itself, has to develop to the new levels in evolution. Therefore, I will make a help meet for it. Help meet. Meet, not meet. M E E T. Meet, help meet means a, a, a mate, yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's like an assistance, you know? If you want to develop your brain, your Adam, I will help you. I will, I will make a help meet for it. And those are the senses. That means in the physicality of those Lemurians, the side were developing, which is the lion, the cattle were developing, which is the ear, the eagle, the nose, and all those senses of the physical body were developing in order for the brain to develop. But really, that was not a help for Adam. It is written. Because after that, after the Jehovah Elohim created all of these creatures, which relate to the senses of the brain, he says, but for Adam, he didn't find help meet. Or partner that will really develop the brain. So therefore, Jehovah Elohim says, well, if the sense of sight cannot fully develop the brain, can help, but it's not really helping. If the, if the sense of hearing is not fully developed the brain, if the sense of smelling is not fully developed the brain, together with the sense of taste in the mouth, we need to use another sense in order to develop it. And that sense is the fifth sense, touch. That sense, touch, that we always associate with the hands. Right? Of course, that sense is in all the flesh. You see, everybody touches your flesh and any part of your body, you immediately sense it. But the main organs are related with the hand, that in Hebrew is called Yad, which is related with the word Yod, the Hebrew letter Yod, which is always associated with the phallus, with the sexual organ. Yod is phallus. The man has the phallus, which is the most sensitive organ of the sense of touch, but it is related with the hands, as we explain in many lectures. And of course, so the sense of touch is how the tree of life developed at expenses of the tree of knowledge. Because the root of the tree of life is in the sexual genitalia. And the roots of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is in the sexual genitalia as well. But uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the two polarities, male, female, are exactly in the sex, expressed there. So the only way in order to develop the brain and the speaking or the speech, the capacity of, of develop the word inside of the throat is by nurturing the brain and developing. Because at that time in Lemuria, even though 
The Lemurians were seeing many things. The brain were not at the size that we have within now. The brain was in, uh, developing, not of the size that we have. And in order to perform that, it is written that Jehovah Elohim said, let's, let's put a sleep. Or to put it in other words, Adam, the brain, to sleep. In order to divide the two polarities that are within him or within it. These two polarities relate to the polar polarities of the sexual energy. That the androgynous Adam had it polarized up to the brain. The sexual energy is polarized in two ways. In the physical body, it crystallizes the positive or active way in the rachis liquid. It's called the uh, rachis, rachis liquid, which is where the brain floats. The brain develops are at expenses of this liquid that we have precisely in this area of the head. The other polarity of the sexual energy is in the semen, in the sexual organs down here. So there are the two polarities. The positive polarity is called Adam and the other is called Eve. But in the androgynous man, this Adam and Eve were up. Or Eve, the sexual organ, was, of course, under the service of the brain. But in order for the brain to develop completely, it is necessary to divide the two forces and to separate them in two bodies. Because the feminine force of the sexual energy attracts because it's passive, by nature, attracts, gathers all the mixture of forces which are in the universe and in nature. And that is uh, uh, very uh, simple to see in any woman. When a woman is pregnant, immediately she, her body gathers all the mixture of forces of nature and the cosmos in order to create in her womb. Of course, that capacity was developed in the androgynous Adam, when Eve still was inside of him. It means when the power of the uterus, the power of the Divine Mother, was inside of him as the power of the Father. The Father is the brain, the Mother is the sexual organ. In both, Brain and sex cooperating in the androgynous were, were creating that human being that the Bible describes. But of course, <clears throat> when those two polarities were separated, in order for the sexual force to attract more and to give the opportunity to the brain to develop all the cosmos, all the universal forces of the universe and nature through the absorption of those forces in the very sexual act. That's, of course, a marvelous creation, a marvelous engineer. That is God. So in the beginning, when those two polarities were separated, it is written there in the books of esotericism, that the couples were seeing the sexual force as something sacred that was assisting them to develop their brain in order for them to have a capacity of reaching the level of human beings. So the true human beings of that epoch were willingly leaving those bodies to the creatures that were evolving from the animal kingdom. They happily were inheriting these bodies in order to learn. But of course, 
they learn the tradition or the humans that were already taught by the angels at that time. It is stated that they were traveling to the temples in Lemuria. In the temples of Lemuria, when the moon was full, because the moon related, is related with a woman, with creation. When the, when, the, when the moon was full, mean when was receiving the strength of the sun, doing the will of the sun, which is the brain, then the couples were into the temples. There they were naked. They were not ashamed because ego, lust, all that that we have within right now didn't exist. And in front of the angels, the masters, the Kumaras, they were performing their sexual act. And learning how to extract all that force that was gathering in the sexual act to the sexual organs, their particular individual Eve. Both male and female were developing their brain by sucking the forces of nature and the cosmos through the sexual act, through their Eve, through their Yod. Of course, the male body was developing the phallus, while the female was developing the uterus, the vagina. But within the same vagina, there were the phallus, that in this day and age is called clitoris. That's the Yod. The power of the father there in the woman. So both Yod united the clitoris and the phallus of the man in the sexual act. And by transmuting, sublimating that force, this is how these uh, bodies were developing the brain and the capacity that the human beings had through their bodies. And they were learning how to create the internal bodies. But of course, they were animals. We cannot deny that. When they were animals, they were multiplying themselves through fornication, through the orgasm, through the spasm, which is normal among animals. They had to learn how to avoid that under the guidance of the angels. That's how any humanity does it. But when the sexes are divided, Eve, our own particular sexual organ, had the capacity to develop evil and good. The way that we are teaching here is the good. But they learn also the evil way. And it is written there that they committed the mistake of falling into animal generation, returning to the animal level. Now, of course, uh, uh, if you read carefully in detail the third uh, chapter of the book of Genesis, when the serpent, which is simple, the symbol of the sexual force, is tempting the sexual organ. Because it's in the sexual organ when you have the opportunity to multiply as well, to bring children, or to fortify your brain, to develop the human level within. The serpent said to the woman, Isn't that right that Jehovah Elohim said to you, You shall not eat? from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. And then the woman, Chava, the sexual force, expresses. Jehovah Elohim said, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the sexual organ, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it. That is in relation with, with the mouth, Adam. Because that was a commandment to Adam. But now, the serpent is talking to Eve, the female aspect of us. 
And then she added, neither ye touch it, lest ye die. You see, only that phrase there, is, neither ye touch it. Because they are already separated in sexes, and to the sense of touch is how Eve and Adam are united. Because they were united again in the adogenous body, but now they are separated. And how do we unite? How do we men and women unite in order to become an androgynous being again? Through the sexual act. Through the yad. Through the sexual organ. Through the sense of touch. Neither, he said, you shall touch it. Of course, that is a command. At that time. Because you don't know how to handle that force. If you forget about my command and you do it without my consent, without my presence, as we explain in other lectures, of course, the sense of touch will not be controlled. And if you observe, the most sensitive organ of the sense of touch is in the midst of the column, the midst of the garden, in the center, sexual organ. Above it is the heart, a little bit to the left, but it's in the center. And then the nose. Then the mouth, you see, the other beasts, the lion, the eyes, are by, side by side. The cattle is side by side. But the eagle, which is the breeding capacity, is in the middle. The speech, which is Adam, the power of the word, is in the middle. And down there is Yesod, Eve, that was separated. So through Eve is how Adam breathes. You see the nose? The eagle helps him. And then Adam pronounced the word. Adam says, Iao. And Iao is the first triangle, the tree of life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Through Iao is how Adam, the nose, when breathes and pronounced, takes the force of Eve in order to develop the brain. 100%. And not only the brain, but that which is behind the brain, which is the mind, and that which is the emotional body that has to be controlled by the mind, which is not heart, which in Sanskrit is called Kamarupa, body of desires. Animal desires that we have a lot. And it's in this area as well. In the heart. And in the solar plexus. The inferior emotion. And in the heart the superior emotion. By developing that. By controlling that. Through the breathing. Exercise. This is how Adam. Controls everything. In nature. What nature? Your nature. Still people think when they talk about Adam, they talk about the male. And they think that they have to control nature, means the outside nature. By polluting uh, the atmosphere with petroleum, with gasoline, uh, by killing creatures, because we are the king of nature. The Bible says king of nature, no killer of nature. The killer of nature is the intellectual animal. The intellectual lovers. The braggers of the intellect. But of course, this is how it is written. That Eve uh, uh, was tempted. In other words, men and women were excited, individually speaking, in their homes. Without the presence of the angels, neither of their own inner God. They just were aroused. Excited, sexually speaking. And united their sexual organs. So Eve, of course, fell under the temptation of the sexual energy. And what happened? In their homes, they lost the sexual power the essence of God 
Because when Eve was created at that time, Adam said, the brain, this is essence of my essence. The Bible said, bone of my bones. Well, but in order for the bone to be created, you need the essence because the other meaning of the word that is translated as bone is essence. This is essence of my essence and flesh of my flesh. Well, the flesh is related to the sense of, the sense of touch. Do you realize that? All the flesh relates to the sense of touch. And within it is the essence. So when Adam said, this is essence of my essence, bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh means touch of my touch. And she will be called Isha. This is what the Bible says. Because what's taken from Ish. This word Ish is man for fire. And Isha is woman for the female aspect of the fire. So in other words, it's explaining very clear there that the fire, which is God, is divided into forces. The two polarities, Ish and Isha. It doesn't say that Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve is only the brain and the sexual organ. And then, of course, when the brain, Adam, couldn't control his wife, since that time, the wife controlled the husband in all the homes of the world. Right? And the man says, I am the head of my home. And the woman says, this is what you say. <laughs> because I'm giving you permission to say it. It's true, you know. The brain should control, of course, the sexual organ. That's the point. But it's not about violence. But with intelligence. If the brain allows the pineal gland within which intelligence is to control the mind, the brain will easily control the sexual organ. But now the sexual organ, Eve, control the brain completely. The brain is really atrophied. Adam is degenerated. At that time, of course, when that humanity fell, as we said, when they ate, they ate because they, they even ate, eat it, but they also touch it. They ate of the fruit, they touched the fruit, they didn't sublimate the energy, the essence. To the sense of touch, but they, they, they spill it through the orgasm and spasm of the beasts. And they fell into animal generation. And that's why, in the beginning, after that, when that happened, and you read the Bible that describes there alchemically and cabalistically, it is written that. Adam knew his wife. Knew his knowledge. But he knew his wife through the orgasm, to the spasm. And his wife, his sexual organ, begat Cain. That's the first child of the couple. Or we will say, that's the first outcome of the brain and the sexual organ combined through the orgasm. That's Cain. Of course, that Cain was strong. Because this is how humanity start knowing evil. Knowing the tree of death, which is called Klippoth. Immediately the energy sank into Klippoth and Cain was born within Thereafter, humanity, because falling into sin, they knew evil. They developed that Cain, which is the mind. That's why it says that the brain, Adam, knew his wife, Eve, and she begot Cain within the brain of Adam. 
Then Cain, the mind, starts seeing the exterior world, the physical world, through the senses. To the sight, to the ears, smell, smell it and touch it, taste it. And of course, we, uh, humanity starts developing in the opposite way. In the start of, instead of capturing the psyche, the spiritual within, as Adam, the androgynous, was doing it, now Cain, through the mind, to the brain, is doing it. But he is not capturing the above, the superior forces, is the inferior. Clip off through the senses. And this is how it is written that he was a tiller of the ground. Ground is Adama, which is related to the physicality. So the mind, Cain, was of course capturing that. And this is how we do it. Through the senses in this day and age, we capture the physical world. Do we capture the internal worlds? Can we see the four dimensions, the fifth, the sixth? No, we cannot. Lemurians did it. Why? Because within their brain, still the pituitary gland and the pineal gland were senses, psychological senses, that were capable of, of seeing the ultra. That's why it is stated in other mythologies, not Hebrew mythology, but Greek mythology, that those individuals were cyclops, meaning that they were not completely seeing the physical world, but the third eye were fully developed, they were seeing the psychic world. They were more in contact with the psychic, with the spirit, than with the physical. So therefore, this cane became a very sly entity within us, sly. Something that we needed to know as well, because the gods, the Elohim, they know good and evil. That's why they don't fall. If they fall, it's because they want to fall. But our humanity didn't know evil. And when they knew evil, they get stuck there. Identifying with, them, with Malkut, the physical world. And still in this day and age, we identify. That's why when we teach Gnosis, we said, close your eyes. Don't pay attention to the exterior world. Go inside. Develop inside. Why do we want to develop outside? Why are in this day and age too many schools of black magic that teach you how to fortify your mind? And that teach you how to fortify your ego? As if we uh, didn't have that ego already strong. Why do we have to fortify what we already have? It's like, for instance, you go and visit uh, uh, somebody that is in jail. And he is behind the bars. And you tell, I will advise you how to be free from your prison. How will that the prison, the prisoner, right? Well, uh, put bricks in between the bars. Right? Put bricks in between the bars and you will see how you will be free. The prisoner will say, what? You mean to fortify my prison? This is what the people do in this day and age. Develop a strong personality. Develop your anger. Don't be frustrated. Release it. I mean, we are already in the cage. The bird is already in the cage. We have to fortify the cage. We are going to be free like that? No, of course not. You see how this world is upside down? We keep fortifying Cain. When Cain was the one that killed Abel. And who was Abel? It is written that after Eve created Cain inside of us, she created Abel. Habel, Habelim, vanity of vanities. That consciousness became submitted to the vanities of the world. This is what Habel means in Hebrew, 
vanity. But that conscience at that time was learning from that vanity, from that evil. That's why it is written that the conscience starts saying, okay, now I am sink in this world which is not the spiritual world. I am in the physical world and even to play puff. Hell. Let us take advantage of that and learn about evil. And that's why the Bible states that Habel was a keeper of the sheep. But it's not true. Keeper is not written there. It says an evil of the sheep or taking advantage of evil. Ra of sheep. You see that in Hebrew the word Ra means evil. And you find that Habel, the consciousness, was evil. But in the sense that he was learning from evil. Because he was taking the first born of the sheep as an offering to Jehovah. It is written there that Abel was offering the firstlings of his flock. That means that consciousness that was bottled into the evil, he was, as we do there, we meditate, we sit down and comprehend. We analyze. Because we need to receive from God. We need to be united with God again. So Abel, or Habel as the Bible says in Hebrew, was smart. He said, I am separated now because of the sin of my brain and my sex. Psychologically, I had to reunite again with my spirit and give this knowledge of evil that I have right now. That is called re-ligare, religion, rebinding the consciousness to the spirit. Because of the fall, we unbinded ourselves from it. So when we do here, we sit down and meditate, it's a consciousness, it's that habel. Rebinding itself to God. That's called religion in Latin. Religare. So that's why, that is what Habel was doing, according to the Bible. Was doing religion. Rebinding itself through meditation. To a worship to God. Because that's to worship God. When you sit down and you pray to your inner God... And try to take the good from that evil and to learn the new virtue that will give you knowledge of evil in order not to fall again. And of course, the consciousness does it by controlling the senses. Controlling the senses and that, of course, pleases the being, the God. It's written that Jehovah Elohim was happy because of the work that Habel was doing. But when he saw what Cain was doing, he says Cain is doing the opposite. He's a tiller of the ground, meaning he is very identified with the ground, with the physicality, with the physical body, with the senses of the physical body, and he's learning a lot in, the, in his mind. He's putting a lot of knowledge. He's collecting also. This is what is called Kabbalah. Kabbalah means to receive. So Cain was receiving, and is still receiving, from the exterior world, a lot of books, a lot of blah, 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 a lot of knowledge identified with the ego, and collecting, 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 Kabbalah, 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 black Kabbalah. It's a Kabbalist. As Habel is also a Kabbalist. But he is taking the good from the evil. Cain is not taking the good from the evil. He's just collecting. Like in this day and age. A lot of people are collecting too much in their mind. And they call themselves Kabbalists as well. 
because Cain take or collects from the wealth of the earth in order to feel strong through desire. And it is written there. If you do good, you will be praised. But if you become a slave of desire, desire is at the door. That desire is, of course, at the doors of the senses. And you are a slave of it. So you are not praised. So Jehovah Elohim was not pleased with the work that Cain was doing. As in this day and age, many religions, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Taoists, you name them. They memorize the Bible. They memorize the Quran or the Buddhist uh, scriptures and many things. And they think that because they know with periods and commas and semicolons, their sacred books, they are done. And they think that they understand the sacred scriptures with their cane, with their mind. But the mind only wants to collect. Cain just wants to collect. To rise, they said, in evolution. And then to have a lot of knowledge. To put into their ego that knowledge until the ego explodes. Yeah, it really will explode, but down there in hell. If that happens. When the ego is so heavy, they sink into hell. And eventually in the eighth sphere, explodes. In the ninth. And the essence is liberated, but without knowledge. That intellectual knowledge, subjective knowledge that they get during their life is just wasted. But if you follow the example of Abel, and you get the first essences, the first things that are within the ship that he is experiencing, of course, God will be pleased with you. And that is the true Kabbalah, the superior Kabbalah, the intuitive Kabbalah. Unfortunately, uh, this is written, Cain, Cain was stronger than Abel, and Cain killed Abel. No more intuition. That intuitive element that was developed in the Lemurian, even in the Atlantean civilization, disappeared. Now, Cain is a strong. What is Abel? People are worshipping God through Cain and thinking that through Cain they will get heaven. But they ignore that the Bible is written, is, is explaining there that God is not pleased with the mind and the intellectual mind that we have. Only with Abel. But he's dead. So we have to resuscitate Abel. Which is our own willpower. Good willpower. This willpower is called in Hebrew... Razon. You see, when the consciousness with Abel, which is dead, resuscitates through the initiations, then we are developing Razon le Kabel. Razon le Kabel means the willpower to collect, the willpower to receive with the consciousness, with Abel, with Moshe which is the willpower completely developed, Moses. But the other, Radzon Le Cabel, is what uh, Cain is doing. What is the opposite of Radzon? Is desire. In the consciousness, Radzon is willpower, but in the mind of Cain is desire. So, as you see, Cain is also doing Kabbalah, collecting receiving in the mind but in the opposite way that's why when you study Kabbalah when you study the doctrine then you find a very subtle thread that is dividing the two Kabbalists because both of them collect 
One collects through the mind, or one collects through the consciousness. And that is called in Hebrew, Kabbalah, Kabel, to receive, to collect. You see many people there, for instance, in, the, in Wall Street, they are collecting a lot of dollars, a lot of gold, a lot of money. That's Cain. Identify with the wealth of the earth. But we don't want the wealth of the earth. We want the wealth of heaven. And in order to get that, we have to know evil, which we are 97% evil. And the sample is to resuscitate Abel through the initiation. But remember very carefully this, very careful, that if your brain is weak, in order to fortify it, you need the sexual energy, you need Eve, because Eve was created with that objective. To fortify the brain, to fortify the senses, and to create the internal elements that we need in order for Moses, Moshe, willpower, the consciousness, to take over and to become a human being. So if you want to do this work, that is, to reach the level of human being, again, without the help of the Shekinah, it's impossible. The Shekinah is a feminine aspect of God, which is that light which is within Eve, within the sexual organs. Because the Shekinah is female, and the sexual organs are female, whether in the male or in the female. So, that Shekinah is the Divine Mother Kundalini. In Sanskrit. So by extracting that Shekinah is how Moses, the willpower inside of us, takes strength and go to the heart and see God face to face. Moses is the willpower. But it has to be born from the waters. Is your Moses at least a baby right now? Or he doesn't even exist within you yet? But if you are in chastity, if you are transmuting, then you understand why Moses was the son of a priest of the tribe of Levi and a priestess of the tribe of Levi. Worship means the priesthood of the initiation. If your brain is a priest of Levi and if your sexual organ is a priestess of Levi, that means that you know chastity, you know the mystery of that. And then Moses, that willpower, is being born. And by growing inside of you, will go up to that, to see his own God face to face, knowing good and evil, because he is coming from Mithraim, Egypt, knowing that. But without the Shekinah, without Eve, Adam cannot develop. That's why there are many groups in this day and age trying to develop that knowledge that is written, that is promised in the Bible, and only to enter into the promised land. But how are they going to develop when they are not taking their Shekinah up to that? Moses needed the Shekinah. That's why he married and, and, and came from the bathroom to the top. Moses was not born there on the top of Sinai. He was born in Egypt, Mithraim, this physicality that we have. This is where Moses was born. And by developing, he went up. The same with us. This is willpower. Ratzon Lekabel. This is Moses. This is Ratzon. But desire, that's not Moses. Desire is the contrary. It's Cain. It's Tubal Cain. And many other... It is a Nimrod, etc., as, as you know. And that's why it's a simple. When we know this knowledge, we know that we are 
in this uh, uh, level right now because we need to go up. But by practicing. Chastity. Three factors we need in order to do it. First factor, to be born again. It is what Master Jesus taught to Nicodemus, this great rabbi. You need to be born again. You need the Shekinah. You need the force of your sexual organ in order to fortify your brain. And after fortifying your brain, your senses, and your physicality, you have to fortify your vitality. And when you already fortify your physical body, your brain, your vitality within you, then you can be born in the astral emotional plane by creating that creature, Hayot, HaKadosh, that Ezekiel talks about, which is the bull. And above that, you can create the lion. And above the lion, you create the eagle. When the bull, the lion, the eagle are created within you, then you reach the level of human being. And then you see why Raphael, this great painter, painted the Adam Kadmon floating among these four creatures. The angel, the bull, the lion, and the eagle. And sustaining him in the space. Well, that space is heaven. That heaven is the brain, is the head of the physical body. Because here is where these entities, these bodies express to the real human being. The lion expresses to the sight, the bull expresses to the ears, the eagle through the nose, and the true human being through the mouth. And the central of the column of the tree of life which relates to the central nervous system. This central nervous system is the brain and the spinal medulla. The brain and the spinal medulla, the central nervous system, is the throne of God. If you want your God to sit there in his throne, before you have to have the Hayot HaKadosh, cry, speak, roar, bellow, the four creatures inside of you. Then you can say inside of your brain, Hallelujah, 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 because he's there sitting in the throne of your own body. That is the spirit, the true divinity within you, because you are really a human. This is how you develop. But that is in the steps. Little by little, this is how you create that human. You need chastity. You need meditation. Because you need to know yourself. To know all of those things that we have, to, uh, we have, that we have inside and that are really damaging the work that we have to do. We have to take care, take care of that. We have to push them out. To throw them out. As Jesus did. He entered into the temple of God. Which is the physical body. And he discovered. In the temple of his own body. A lot of merchant, merchandise. Merchants of the temple. Hmm? Cain was there of course. He's a merchant. Dealing with all the wealth of the earth. And then he took willpower. He took the whip. That whip is razón le cabel, willpower. And whipping everybody, pushed them out of the temple. His temple. You, we should do the same thing. Take the will, power, the whip. And to use that whip, willpower, symbolically. Remember that. Not literally. Because there are people that think, oh, I have to whip myself. And they go with a whip and they start learning masochism. It is not to be a masochist. It's to use the whip. Willpower. Habel. Moses. Wisely. 
in order to develop inside and to clean the temple. Because the temple of God is called a house of prayer. Isn't it? Our house, our, our home, our house, our temple, the physical body should be a house of prayer. But it is not. You sit down and you see that there's a lot of garbage inside of us. So we have to do it. That's, that, that's the, called the alchemical work. In order to perform the great work. We have to sacrifice humanity. What humanity we have to sacrifice? Our own humanity. Which is mingled with animals. For others. Meaning that with our example. When we do this. Our example will teach others to do the same thing. Because faith without works is dead. Do you have questions? What's the other two factors? The other factor, I mean, the first factor is chastity. In order how to take advantage of Eve to fortify the brain, Adam. The second factor is to annihilate Cain. That's the second factor. Which is desire. That desire of collecting. That sexual desire. That frustrated desire. That desire of being better. Etc., etc. All that which is desire should be annihilated. Because he desires at the doors of our senses where we are really fortifying the ego, which is Cain. And of course, the ego, the psychological aggregates, uh, relate to seven levels. The seven levels of the being, which unfortunately are taken over by Cain. In each level, we have other seven levels. Seven by seven are 49 levels. But in synthesis, we say it only seven. He who find Cain hidden within the seven levels of the mind, this person, this initiate, should kill Cain and to extract and to take the blood of him you know, and to create Seth inside. And of course, uh, uh, the third factor is what we're doing here. To teach, to help others in their own level. Not to be selfish and thinking that this knowledge is only for us. You know, this knowledge is for everybody. That's why we are broadcasting this knowledge. And I hope that we'll help everybody. But remember that salvation is re relies on the three factors. To be born again, to die, and to sacrifice for humanity. This is how we work and we develop. Do you have another question? How we can find, uh, how, how do we can fight desire in the world of desire? Mm -hmm. By uh, praying to God. By, by performing, by, by, by exercising razón le cabel, which means the will to receive from God. Through habel. By being here now during the day. Because really, this whole society is based in desire. It's been in Cain. Cain. Cain has gathered all religions of the world in his hand. So we have to study that within ourselves. To take advantage of the gymnasium that life gives us. Because we live in the world of Cain. 
Cain is alive in each one of us. So we have to kill Cain in order to re-enter into the kingdom of God and to resuscitate Abel. And for that, there are three factors. Little by little. We do it in our own world, in our own level. In the very moment when he is facing desire, like adultery, is to pray the prayer of the Lord. When somebody is tempted, as Eve was tempted, and when he sees that Cain is there ready to kill his own soul again, and then you concentrate in your inner being and say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, or at son le cabel, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power. Amen. You have another question? Why is the elder's water symbolized by man? Yeah, well, the, <clears throat> why is the symbol of water related to man among the four creatures of Ezekiel? Because the power of God is in the waters. That's why in the Bible you find that the superior waters that is in the Bible translated as heaven. Is translated in Hebrew it says Shamayim. Shamayim means the, the fiery waters of heaven. Because Mayim means water. Only the word Im by itself means ocean. So when you said Mayim, water, you said Ma, the forces of the female forces in the heaven. Mayim, the waters. And the man is from, from the waters. That's why in the seven days of Genesis you find that everything that is coming out into the surface of the universe is coming from the waters. It is written. And the Spirit of God was floating upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. From there, from those waters, said, let there be light. And the light was. And God said, let's separate the inferior water from the superior waters in order to create the firmament that awakened consciousness inside of us. And he did it. And then he says in the third day, let the waters give the dry land, which is the internal bodies, etc., etc., the waters are there always. And that's why the man itself emerges from the waters. That's why Moses was born from the waters. And that's why when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan, the Holy Spirit came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son from the waters. So from your sexual waters is how you are being born again. Yes, yeah, your question? Is that true that we are tested uh, in, to the four elements, to the four forces of nature when we are entering into this path? Of course, it's true. Because all that is the ego within is a wrong transformation of the forces of the elements. All of that that we, all of that that we have within, which is animal, which is Cain, is related to nature. And we are tested always in order for us to see a weakness. And then to see that, that we need to overcome. The problem is that when we are tested and only to show us, hey, you have to overcome this, instead of defeating the serpent, 
you become allured by the serpent, right? But temptation is fire, and the power of the over temptation is light. Temptation will be always there, test always from the beginning until the end, and you have to overcome those temptations, those tests, those ordeals. In order for that, that need to be inside of us, that need to emerge from us, to emerge. <coughs> hmm? But only if you are a conqueror. Those that are being born as masters, as human beings, are conquerors, victors. Hmm? And how, it, what is what they conquered? Themselves. You know, it is easy. To be Napoleon, conquering other males in the field, but to conquer yourself, that's very difficult. I don't know if Napoleon will do that. Because that is to face your own weakness, your own uh, evil. And that is, of course, through ordeals. That's why the ordeals of fire, water, air, and earth are always happening during the path. Yes? Exactly. How does one overcome temptation? By learning and comprehending that temptation. How do we overcome temptation? In the moment it arises. In the moment when it arises. I said, by worshipping. You don't comprehend in the moment when, you, when it arises. It's impossible. To overcome it. To overcome it, yes. By praying the prayer of the Lord. Not forgetting your inner being, your inner mother, because they are the superior forces that control your inferior, that is you. So if you forget your being, what happened with Adam and Eve, in the moment when the serpent was tempting Eve, Eve didn't remember and said, hey, let us invoke God to see what you say. God, the serpent says that we should eat it. What do you think? God would say, no, I told you no. But they didn't invoke God. They just said, okay, let's see what happened. Right? So in the moment when we are tempted, we have to remember God. And to pray, if you, if you feel the desire so strong, then pray to God. God will give you a lot of strength in order to overcome the temptation. In the very moment. And after that, when you have time, one hour, or immediately, three hours later, whatever, go and meditate. Comprehend that. Why did I feel that? I had to understand this part of Cain, which is in me. Is lust, is anger, what it is? Meditate, comprehend. And when you understand and comprehend that, then ask for annihilation. Invoke your Shekinah, your Divine Mother. And says, please, Divine Mother, annihilate this. They already comprehend it. And it says, okay, my son. And they clean you. And then you go ahead to be tempted again. Because remember that Cain should be killed seven times. And now we have not only Cain, but Tubal Cain. If Cain was to be avenged seven times, Tubal Cain says, I had to be, I had to be, do it, to be revenged seven times, seven times. Or well, 70 times seven. Uh, Tubal Cain really is within. Questions? Either of you? Um, when you said we're children in nature, is it more so what we have within ourselves, or is it both what we have within ourselves and outside of ourselves as well? Killers of nature, yeah. Why are we saying that we are killers of nature? Of course, because we are killing our own divine nature and fortifying our animal nature. So you see, we are between, because a human. It's a bridge between the animal and the divine. But we are animal. When we reach the level of human, and then we are a bridge. And then we see, oh my goodness, I have to annihilate more animal in order to go to the divine. But in this day and age, Cain is animal, 100%. And it's killing divine within and without. So obviously we are killers. Yes? How deep does one have to be in meditation to comprehend? 
we have to remember ourselves and we have to be awakened. Remember that when we sit in meditation, we have to sit also with God. Where is God seated? Well, if you remember him and you invoke him, he will come and sit down in your central nervous system. Your brain and the spinal medulla. That is the throne of God. If you concentrate from your pineal gland and invoke him, he will descend and sit down here. Sit down there. So when you are remembering there, when you are seated there with him, you are performing religare, religion. Only we will say it in 1%. He says, God helps me. Help me, God, because I am your son. I, the consciousness. I'm dead, but I'm your son. Luke Cain, kill me, is in the mind. Help me to concentrate and to comprehend it in order to go out. So in the very moment of meditation, you have to sit in the throne of God. The pineal gland is the seat of the soul and the brain and the medulla is the throne of God. That's why it is always shown in Buddhism. When you sit down, your spinal column has to be straight. Why? Because God is energy. They have to sit there together with you. So when you meditate, you have to pray. Why? Because usually we are outside. Cain, take us outside. You are meditating there, trying to comprehend one aspect of him. And Cain, Cain comes and, te and tells you, get out of here. What are you doing here? Wasting your time. Come, come to the mall. Come to the sea. You see this uh, movie? Uh, let's go to the streets. And then you start. You remember that lady that uh, was looking at you in the mall or in the streets? And then you start begging outside from yourself. And then you say, oh, Cain took me out. And then you shall pray, my God, please take me again. I want to sit here and to comprehend this. And try to control Cain, which is your mind. Because Cain is always identified with the wealth of the earth. And without that, all that garbage that is in the earth. So we have to control it. To transform that completely. And it is by remembering God. That's why Master Zamael Umber stated, you have to remember yourself. But the true self is that which is in the human being. You see the word human being. The being is that which is behind in your spinal column. Being. To be or not to be. That is the question. Don't forget the being. The true self. In the moment of meditation. And analyze with your consciousness, your ego. Because remember that Adam is there, is your brain. Eve is there. And in between is Cain. And you, dead, Abel. So you're trying to get out from this world of Klippoth. Then through initiation, Adam will know his wife again and will create the third son, which is Seth. And Eve will say, oh, now I have another son, which will replace Abel, who's my mind, Cain, killed. But that Seth will be a new being, a human being. You see how the Bible explains all of that? It is written there. I'm just taking it and disclosing that for you. But it's written there. When you meditate and you read and you comprehend that, then you are receiving the knowledge. It's written there, but in clue. Because this is called mythology. Mythology is specifically related in myths. Myth, a myth is a coffer within which is a lot. If you open that coffer, then you see a lot of gold 
of the spirit. So that is what the Bible is. It's a big coffer with a lot of myths. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and etc. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,